about what dragon that dragon it's eating the sun the, what <laughs> Jesse that's not a dragon that's a that's well, an it? it's it's an eclipse what's an eclipse well we're on the uh, campus of the University of Louisville the Rock Planetarium and standing next to me is Jerry Villiger and uh, he is an astronomer and scientist, and uh, thanks for coming on Derby Academy today. My pleasure. So we know that eclipses, the, uh, it's, not, it's not a dragon eating the, the sun anymore, like they used to think, you know? Isn't Glad that, for that. Definitely. Tell us, well, the, what is a solar eclipse, and, uh, and why was the one that was in Kentucky uh, so special? It's a chance alignment of the sun, moon, and earth. Exact. Most of the time, the moon does not pass directly in front of the sun. It'll pass a little above, a little below and you have to have a lot of conditions for the moon to pass directly in front of the sun so that its shadow falls on earth. So you see basically with eclipse glasses, you have to use eclipse glasses right. until the moon completely covers the sun. Mm -hmm. The bigger and bigger bites were being taken out like a cookie or mm -hmm. a dragon right. and then uh, at the moment that the moon completely blocks out the sun, just before that you get a little spot on the sun, we call that the diamond ring. It's a really pretty picture. Mm -hmm. People can look it up, the diamond ring effect. And then you have a dark spot with a glowing halo around it because the sun has a glowing atmosphere called the corona. Now that corona is maybe a hundred thousand times less bright than the sun itself. So you have a little bit of glow and then you have twilight. And then on the horizon it's light. So it's really weird. Most of the time you have a sunrise or sunset, half the sky is dark, dark over in that direction, it's light over in that direction. This time it's up above is dark and on the horizon it's light and it's like a giant eye. Mm -hmm. where you have a pupil and then you have a glowing glowing area around it right. and it's uh, very very uh, moving right. and you have that for two minutes. We know that um, there was a great racehorse named Eclipse who 95% of all thoroughbreds uh, descend from on the male side. He was um, born during an eclipse in the 1700s. Uh, could you tell us a little more about that one? That was uh, April 1st 1764 right. and that was an eclipse in Europe. It went from southwest to northeast and it clipped the coast, the southeast coast of England. Mm -hmm. And we looked up uh, Cranbourne in Berkshire, which is just west and south of London. Mm -hmm. So the eclipse was not total anywhere. It was what's called an annular eclipse. The moon was too far away from the sun at that point, to, at that time to completely cover the sun. So there's a little ring around the sun, but it was still mm -hmm. pretty good. And so this horse was born in a place where the eclipse was partial. It's about 85% partial. And we can tell if it was born during the eclipse, it was between about nine in the morning and noon. Okay. And do you think the eclipse had anything to do with him being so fast? Uh, <laughs> no, but it may have inspired his owners to help him train well. There you go. Very good. <laughs> so how much longer do we have to wait for the next one? You, you have to do two things if you want to see an eclipse. You either have to travel or wait. If you want to sit here in Louisville and wait, it's uh, 2153. 2153. Wow. <laughs> if you want to travel, there's one in two years in uh, July of 2019 in mm -hmm. Chile and Argentina. Okay. And there's one going up from Texas to Indianapolis to Cleveland and Buffalo and Montreal in 2024. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on Derby Academy. We appreciate your expertise and uh, we look forward to the next uh, celestial event. My pleasure, Ronnie. And remember, an eclipse is the greatest two minutes in astronomy. Awesome. Did you know that all modern thoroughbreds can trace their family trees back to one of three horses? These three horses, the Godolphin, the Byerly, and the Darley, were all imported into Great Britain from the Middle East from the 1680s until about 1729. One of these horses, the Darley, had a great-great-grandson who was born on, in April of 1764. This horse was named Eclipse because that day there was a complete solar eclipse throughout England. This horse grew to be strong, sound, and fast, although they said he had an unattractive head. He also had a difficult temperament, and for that reason, he didn't start racing until he was five years old. But when this horse made it to the racetrack, 
He ran 18 times, and he won every single one of them. Several of the races were walkovers, meaning he was so good, no other horses showed up to challenge him. After depleting all of the competition that England could provide, Eclipse was retired to stud in 1771. And as as good as he was on the racetrack, he was even better in the breeding shed. He sired 344 winners and lived to be 24 years old. He was so influential in the breeding shed that today nearly half of all modern sport horse breeds have the horse Eclipse in their blood. And about 95% of all thoroughbreds have Eclipse in their bloodline. The horse has an impact far beyond just the thoroughbred industry. They also have an impact on the horsepower industry. Automobiles have gotten into the act uh, by naming their cars after horses like the Bronco and the Pinto and the Mustang. Mitsubishi currently manufactures a car called the Eclipse, but it's not named after the celestial event. It's named after the 18th century horse, Eclipse. Well, we've learned about the horse eclipse, and we've learned about the celestial event called an eclipse, but now let's take a look at how the name perpetuates every year. Uh, because if you're at the top of the game in the thoroughbred industry, you receive an eclipse award. Uh, it was established in 1971, and uh, a Lexington artist was commissioned. Her name was Adeline Wickman, and she designed the sculpture that you see in front of me. It was based off of an 18th century painting of the horse. And uh, there are almost 20 different categories uh, in the Eclipse Awards. However, the most prestigious is the Horse of the Year. Now this one uh, in front of me was given to the three-year-old Philly champion named Winning Colors in 1988. And uh, Winning Colors was the last Philly to beat the boys in the Kentucky Derby. Trainer D. Wayne Lucas won the Santa Anita Oaks in California early in the year 1988. And off of that win, he decided to bring the horse to Kentucky to race against the boys. Now, only two fillies had ever beaten the boys in the Kentucky Derby, but Winnie Colors took the lead right out of the starting gate, and nobody could catch her. She ended up uh, winning four out of 10 races that year, and uh, at the uh, conclusion of 1988, was voted the three-year-old filly champion, and this is her award that was presented to her in 1988. It's hard to uh, underestimate the impact that the Great Horse Eclipse has on the thoroughbred breed. Again, about 95% of all thoroughbreds trace their family trees back to the great 18th century horse. We'll see you next month on Derby Academy where we'll go behind the scenes to learn about different aspects of the thoroughbred industry.